Hey everyone, welcome to the Ethan and Noble podcast, where our goal is to explore what really matters in someone's journey to living a sustainable and meaningful life. I'm Noble, joined by my co-host Ethan. Hey everybody, very excited to record our second episode. Um, it's been a while. It's actually this is a new year now,、um, and if you're like me, in the past I've Tried in many years before, write a list of New Year resolutions that、uh, I want to, you know, achieve and new goals for myself and in every New Year. And just around around right around this time, about ten, fourteen days into New Year, that's when half of my goals kind of just disappeared. And whether it's a fitness goal, whether it is a you know health related in terms of nutrition goals and eating better and working out, read more.、Um, Hanging out with your family more. These are some of the goals I've, I've had, and I'm sure some of you might have similar goals in the past and even this year as well.、Um, uh, granted, something are a little bit different this year because of the pandemic. Most of my goals, when I said in the beginning, don't really work out, and and、uh, it's very、really、frustrating at times. And and I just find myself in February just going back to my old habits and either just binge watching YouTube or. Eating snacks at the middle of the night, not going to the gym.、Um, Noble, I just want to get some of your thoughts on this, and 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 why don't New Year resolutions work? Yeah, man.、Um, so I'm gonna start this off with just like a quick personal anecdote. Is that I don't really ever set New Year's resolutions, and I never really have, even from like a young age.、Um, I always just, I've always just kind of felt like they're. They're bumming, man. I mean, like, I always get lost in the fact that coming up with goals to change yourself, like, in a positive way, just because of the stroke of a clock to a new year, has always just felt a little bit、um, external to me. It feels like you're trying to change yourself just because society tells you it's a new year and now it's time to use that momentum to change yourself in a positive way and. Um, it just doesn't come from a sincere point of view, and a lot of people always end up defaulting to what everyone else is saying. So people will default to like the, oh, I'm gonna lose weight, I'm gonna get fitter, I'm gonna eat healthier, I'm gonna you know read more, meditate, hang out with my family, right, sleep more, and、um, I think people end up setting much higher、um, thresholds of success than is a realistic and b just. Even like effective. So、um, the biggest flaws I see here is that they're again externally motivated, and then also they don't come from a sincere point of view. And you're playing a game where you are setting too high of a threshold for yourself, where you leave very little room for quote unquote failures. And we're going to talk about that in a little bit here.、Um, and then you also don't set yourself up for success because you give yourself. This massive goal to reach, this ambiguous "I'm gonna get fit" goal, and then you don't have anything to measure that up against in your life or amongst other people in general. I guess we can just scratch this idea of New Year resolutions, probably,、um, and kind of thinking thinking of this in in a way that、uh, a, just a little bit more genuine、um, approach. Um, a genuine approach is what's necessary to actually enact some positive change in yourself. You know, if you're if you're coming from a point of instant of like non sincerity, then you're just failed before you even begin, man. If you don't like, if you don't actually care about changing yourself, it's not going to happen. And、um, I think again, we need to like get rid of the idea that like we need to attain this idea of perfection. And I think that's my biggest problem with resolutions. You set this model of perfection for yourself that's unattainable by anyone's standards. The biggest problem with the New Year's resolution is not that it is, depending on the time of the year it is, but it's the fact that it comes from an insincere point where you set yourself up for failure because you don't just give yourself a manageable, reasonable goal. People don't want to do that, and. Because it doesn't sound good enough. It doesn't sound good to just say, "Today, I am setting out to say,、um, run three days a week, right? And I'm, an ol- I'm only going to run 15 minutes, right? That is a far more manageable goal than saying, 'I'm going to start training for a marathon.' 
you know, and I only use the running, the running anecdote because, well, I like to run. So mm -hmm. <laughs> people don't set like um, sub goals, right? If you're writing this all down in a list and you should, if you really intend to stick to a plan, you should be able to write these points down on a list. You should have your overall goal. Like you could say, I want to get fitter, right? But then you need to write your sub bullet points and say, what is fitter to me? And what are these measurable, attainable um, checkpoints that I can reach that helps me make progress to that? And then my final point is that I think people have this idea of like, you know, zero sum failures. And, you know, if the goal is to like eat healthier and someone has ice cream for dessert one night, they think they've completely blown up this grand scheme of things plan that they've had. And then they're just gonna fall off the wagon. They say, oh, if I've done this once, then what's the point of trying? Well, I think the idea of failure is kind of like misleading because that's not a failure. That's just another step in your journey, you know? I mean, it's, it's not about a destination. It is about dedicating yourself to a process. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, to shift that, right? I think the first step uh, everybody can take is to really asking themselves why. Why is it important to you? Mm -hmm. You know, and, and how is it doing, for, doing it for yourself? And this is very different than I am want to get fit because I want to look better for the for my cameras or for my social media that's very that is very externally motivated mm -hmm. kind of goal um yeah man i think the i think you've you've caught me on that point there the the why and that kind of encompasses everything i've been saying the why is everything if you don't have a why then everything else i think usually falls apart and I speak in general generalities because that's just for the sake of argument here. You know, of course, there are specific instances where, you know, you're going to see success, even if you don't have a why, right? But I think in the end, it's, it's about defining to yourself why this is important to you. And um, that rounds out again to like the point of sincerity. And I think if you're, if you're coming from a point of sincerity, then you really do want to make a change. And if you're coming from a point of Oh, like you said, social media, man. Social media is toxic, even though we all live in it all the time. Uh, yeah. But um, it's great in some ways, but man, it's toxic in others. You can't do this for someone else. You got to do it for yourself. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that segues really into like figuring out possible solutions. Okay, Ethan and Noble, this uh, idea of a concept of a New Year's resolution is bogus. So now what? What do you recommend? Well, I would say... Pretty much, you know, ideally you can reverse the points we've just made is instead of making a decision to affect positive change in your life from an external motivation, um, it should come from an internal motivation, an internal drive to actually affect a positive change in your life. Um, and this doesn't have to be at any particular time in the year. This is a lesson to apply at any time when you come to an epiphany that you have something that you would like to see change in yourself for the better. Um, and then once you have that idea, that large concept in your mind, it's all about bringing it back to reality and um, again, writing it down. I'm a big proponent of writing things down. Let's bring an example into this. I want to get fitter. Okay, you wanna get fitter. What does fit mean to you? Does it mean gaining 20 pounds of muscle? Does it mean losing 20 pounds? So um, does get fit meaning your biceps grow by 10 inches? Um, does this mean that you are having a six pack? Does it mean you can run a marathon? Um, does it mean you can do a triathlon? Like there's a ton of things in between, but the step there is to say, what is success in the next three months? What is success in the next six months? What is success in the next year? What is success in the next five years? Say, okay, let's go back to getting fit. Okay, now I wanna be able to run a marathon. Well, let's not try to run a marathon in six months. Let's try to run a marathon in a year. And the first goal though, is to just start running, right? And the second goal is to fall in love with the process. Um, and that's a huge goal in itself, but that's a byproduct of starting. And I think starting is the biggest thing and sticking to it, building the habit. I would love to hear more from you to actually to in, in, in the terms of the process. And I think people forget, and even I forget all the time that when you have a goal and you see the end point and, and when, you, when you're thinking about the process, uh, we, all, we, we always think about the successes. Nobody think about, I'm gonna fail 
the X amount of times. You know, if your goal is to to get fit to for a marathon or to yes, to be more specific to to be able to run a 5K within uh, two months, you know, for example, um, you in your mind you already have a picture of the the time and you're having amazing runs and you're breaking your PR. Um, I don't know if I've ever heard anybody's like. Re- leaving some room for failures and and what failure really means and how that affects your process. And- Bro, man, I I always love this sort of topic because even even especially with running, even I fall into the pitfalls here. You know, it's like the plan is very clean and beautiful, but the real world is messy, man. Like, yeah. whoa, um, you never know what's gonna pop up. Uh, whether that be stresses in your life, maybe you just had a bad night of sleep. You know, I would say the biggest point to make here from the question you asked me is just to allow yourself to have quote unquote failures, even though to be honest, I don't really think the failures are real failures. I mean, just having a bad day is not a failure. You know, falling off quote unquote, falling off the wagon is not a failure. It is just a part of the journey, man. And in the end, like the process is always gonna let you down. Um, You really have to focus on enjoying the journey and embracing the journey and recognizing that it's just a series of checkpoints that you're probably honestly never going to be satisfied with. Um, but you need to be satisfied in the day to day process and you need to fall in love with enjoying whatever it is, whatever the habit is that you're trying to build. Like at some point it becomes automatic because you enjoy it and it's going to be messy and it's going to be hard. But that's just again, those are that's part of the journey. That's part of the road. That's not a failure. And please remove the idea of a failure from your head, especially when it comes to this. It's just part of the journey and you need to allow yourself to have those moments because they make you stronger. Mm-hmm. I had a therapist. This was about back in uh, October. Um, and we were talking about this idea. I, I was looking to, I was looking for some accountability for kind of for myself when it comes to uh, my energy level and, and I just kind of find myself spending too much time on my phone and uh, playing a lot of video games or just kind of sleeping in and, and these are failures in, in, in a way, right? Um, a very important lesson that I, that I learned from talking to, to my therapist is that this is for, for example, if, if I'm uh, want to get rid of my habit of being on my phone all the time. There's almost no use of maybe at the end of the day when just beating yourself up. But uh, but after speaking to my therapist, what he told me was, uh, let yourself next time when you find yourself in that position again, instead of beating yourself up, ask yourself what let yourself what led you in this situation for the first place. Is to come up with a plan. Mm. So to observe. You know, were you staying in bed for too long and you've kind of felt lazy? What let you, what let you, in that situation where you just kind of pull up your phone and, and scrolling through social media or being in computer and and watching YouTube? Like, what led you there? And think of, ask yourself, how how would you prevent yourself from being in that position from the first place? For me, it was getting up a little bit earlier, getting out of the bed and don't stay in bed for too long. Try not to have my phone around me when I'm waking up. Uh, go out for a walk in the morning or for a run if I can. That was just an example, but that was, that was tremendous in terms of removing yourself from that pattern by uh, kind of stop yourself before you get, get into that rabbit hole. Failures are not failures. They're just learning opportunities. Mm-hmm. Um, time to reflect on yourself and see you know, what the tick was that asked you to do that. Um, And I think in the end, it's all supposed to be on some level fun, you know, because if if you're not having fun, like pursuing the, you know, the best version of yourself, then, you know, why are you doing it? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Your change when you when you're trying to make positive changes in your life, whether during New Year or not, it should be you should first you need to understand internally why why is this important to you and then break it down you know write it down in a list and and really understand specifically what do you mean by uh, all these things that you wrote down what does it mean to what does it mean to you to be fit what does it mean to to you to eat clean what does it mean to you to read more you know how Mm -hmm. um yeah and and have fun with it and mm-hmm. enjoy the process, leave some room for failure. 
of course, and 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 learn from your failure and use your failures as opportunity to learn and 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 observe your own patterns and 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 lastly, if you're looking for a daily tangible things that you can do, our friend Basil has an amazing podcast. Um, he interviewed uh, Hal Elrod, is a very famous um, author. He wrote a book called um, Miracle Morning, and he outlined in in his podcast that we can we can put a link un- under here. Six things you can do every morning to to change your life and. Um, very very cool stuff and I've been adopting adopting it this week and uh, just having so much fun I think it's just been I can already see kind of a lot of shift in my mindset already and yeah really hi- highly recommend it and that being said we're gonna just looking at some comments from last week yeah <laughs> um, I would just say so let's see what we got here our first comment was what uh, specific items can you provide to get in shape in a specific time frame example six to eight weeks so let's just use the example i love you know train for a 5k whatever you want to you want to run a pr in a 5k in six to eight weeks i would say if you're coming from a background of six to eight weeks and you need to get in shape for a 5k i would say the first two weeks maybe three weeks really take time to adapt and then allow your body allow your muscle tendon system to really like get um, get up to speed in what you're doing because the last thing you want to do is hit it too hard and get injured or burned out. Um, so give yourself time and space to back up, chill a little bit, prepare your body. Then you really want to kind of probably go right into some slightly more high intensity training. I'm a big aerobic guy, but I know that um, generally you can get in shape quicker. You can burn the candle really hot if you just throw your body into some pretty high intensity intervals, whether that be, you know, body weight stuff, weight stuff, running stuff. There's a lot of different uh, biking stuff. There's a lot of different ways to do that. Um, But I would say as long as you're being safe, effective, and maybe giving yourself three quote unquote harder sessions a month, harder sessions a week, and giving your body time to recover in between those bouts and eating well, of course, sleeping plenty sleep, is the number one performance enhancing legal drug in the world, guaranteed. And if you're giving yourself time to recover, then you're going to be getting better every day, especially if you're hitting it hot. So that's kind of my quick answer to that, you know, and you can probably apply that to literally any get in shape quick thing, so. Sounds good. And also shameless plug, Nobu and I, and just a few other friends we've been working on, there's a running program and other programs like yoga and hits coming soon but right now we have running programs for anybody who's looking for uh looking to get to start their running journey and to get fit whether that's for a 5k for a marathon so definitely check out uh, our link in the description i love it yeah you know if you want to get fit in six weeks for running man we already got that up there so Hit us up in the description if you uh, if you're if you're feeling that. But um, I think that allows us to go on to the next one where we are generalizing maybe too much about finding a balance, you know, a quote unquote work life balance. And we did not mean to come across as you shouldn't be grinding in some way. I mean, I think most humans probably if they want to get anything done, they're grinding in some form or fashion. We're not saying you shouldn't do that. We sh- we're saying you should grind in a sustainable way and maybe grind on something you love. I'm not going to be out here grinding on something I hate doing. Um, that's just that's just how I'm going to live my life. And maybe I'm going to live by, live by the sword and die by the sword. But man, I ain't going to be out here grinding on something I don't want to do. Life is too damn short. Yeah. So, um, but I appreciate that comment. Yes, I agree. 20, 30 year olds should be grinding. And I think there is some form of balance to be had at all points in your life though. So Mm -hmm. good life there. Sure. And the last comment is from our friend Hannah. And she's asked us to kind of talk more about fasting. Definitely we have uh, an episode about fasting uh, coming up soon. Mm -hmm. Um, But I am, I'm a big fan of um, intermittent fasting. If you think about starting uh, a fast, uh, into in intermittent fasting. You don't need to start with a eight sixteen, or you, you can start with something easier to to handle. You know, maybe you you would uh, eat breakfast a little bit uh, later and eat dinner a little bit earlier, uh, and then you can shorten the time um, the time frame. Don't think about going into fasting like a very 
um, cold turkey, I guess. It's, this, you know, I've tried fasting for two years now, and, and that was one of the least, least effective way um, in terms of approach uh, intermittent fasting. And also give yourself some room for failure. And there's, there's going to be some days that you're breaking your fast and giving yourself some room to do that um, it will make you, your fasting experience more enjoyable. Um, but yeah, it's kind of the short answer. I think those are, that's a great answer. I think that, I mean, that just speaks, that's a great, and that's another great example about everything we've been talking about, right? Yeah. Set yourself up for success. Give yourself some like attainable goals mm -hmm. and be fair to yourself because we are all human. Mm -hmm. And um, yo, I just thought of this actual point and I think this actually leads into a nice wrap up too is um, all of this, I think, goes a lot back into trusting yourself mm -hmm. and also having gratitude that you are in the position to be making these life changes in the first place. Like how lucky are some of us to say, I wanna be able to eat healthier? How lucky are some of us to say, I wanna be able to be fitter? How lucky are some of us to say, I wanna be able to wake up and meditate in the morning or have time to read more? Like that comes from a place of a lot of very awesome life experiences already. And now you are building upon what is already a very fortunate life. Wake up every morning and write down three things that you're grateful for. Um, they can be similar, they can be different, but let yourself know. Let yourself know what you're grateful for. And I think, again, that, that just rolls really well into a nice summary we're making is, you know, making changes should be super intrinsically motivated, you know, um, forget all the external stuff like the changing of the year or all the society, uh, like all society telling you what you should and should not do to reach the perfect version of yourself. Um, and again, like I think I talked about writing it down, have a goal, have a big goal, have a stupid big goal, but give yourself attainable checkpoints to reach, like sub goals um, that are fair to you. And in the end, just be sincere, be realistic and be flexible. Is it? Is it? See ya. Okay.